with everybody. I always forget that woman, she's going to turn up. <laughs> okay, if everybody could mute during readings, that would be great. And to unmute at the end um, uh, of, of a reading so that you can applaud, that's brilliant. And then go back. So I'm going to start reading a, a poem from my latest Aquietus. And this one I haven't read before, I don't think. It's called The Nursery. The nursery was full of many toys, drums and whirling tops, dolls and toy soldiers, a whistle and a tambourine. She could have been a one-man band, but she was always told to be quiet. Soft toys lay on wooden building blocks, a train, a slate, some paint, but no paper or chalk. Nothing seemed to fit together. She asked questions, but the soldiers wouldn't answer. And the dolls lay dumb, eyes wide open. The train only moved in one direction. The circle was closed, the points broken. She pumped the spinning top, waited to see where it would fall. Wondered if the world would make more sense when it stopped spinning. Thank you. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you. Okay. I'm going to put him apart. He's, he's beginning to uh, distract me now. So he's over there. Um, we're going to start off, and if you've probably just seen the, the chat that Peter's put on. So we're going to start everything off with Chris Dickinson, if that's all right with Chris. Oh, Where are you, Chris? great. It uh, just kept it out. I shouldn't say it just gets it out gets of the way. Out. Like that sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> oh dear. Um, this is this is new. I hope it's not too rough round the edges. Remember, Johnish. I wake each morning to another's heartbreak, warmed in the tuck of a duvet. My luck in love. Tea and papers to hand, I am up to date with scandal, well armed to track who is passing the buck in today's scans. Local Covid figures are okay, well taught people's my thoughts, British injustices, Canada's treatment of Indigenous families, infants sent to boarding schools. Johnish age five, lies near the unmarked trees. He died alone, but he has company. His older brother was not told. This pain lasts. I blame arrogance for wrongs in the past. Why need reminders to care about lives? Damage more when we have others to save. Foolish of cultural her heritage, first in Birmingham, then Tottenham, easy with church maxims, the school sect text. Was I lax to teach the lessons I knew, the white man's viewpoint from white men's books? Later, I dismissed regimented lines, the 20th century's greatest poets, diets of British males commanding rhymes, and handwrote stencils of boisterous verse ink smudge sheets rolled off a band machine. Work was full on, I was paid on the nail. No war disturbed our routines. Regular battles were mainly adolescent. We gave our children what we could afford, watched them grow into a volatile world. And I'm greyed out, railing at lack of progress, the taint of wealth, our nation's misgovernment. I cling on to the comforts denied to others. Mine was a good fortune once to anticipate better from a new millennium. Still, sun throws heat beyond the church steeple, flowers blossom with bees, the grass gleams, even the radiator hums when it needs to. Chirping from the yew our tribe of sparrows swoop to feed their brood from homegrown seed. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, Christine. That was lovely. And you just said you just wrote it. That is fabulous. Well, it, it took me a few days. Oh, very <laughs> but it's just finished. <laughs> Good. It's lovely. Can we have a really big hand for Christine Dickinson, Ooh. please? Thank you. And now we're going to have uh, someone from India, Umesh Mohikta. Mo Mo I knew I wasn't going to say your Mohikta. surname right. I okay. do apologise. No um, worries. Uh, no worries. Welcome no. anyway. If you'd like to read your poem, that would be wonderful. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, so yeah, let's start. The first one is called Stark Naked. Stark Naked. He ran on the stone coal street and the suited and booted world, nowhere to hide, ran for cover. False covers, rappers of the society, stopping, killing him softly. Once they wilted, he spread his wings like wildfire, burning the bridges, towns and farms, spreading ashes for new growth, fresh colors, for new growth, fresh colors. That was the first one. And uh, there is a short one. Sprawling thoughts. Sprawling thoughts, haywire, lie wire, crossfire, hellfire, ceasefire, inspire, always entangling, surrounding like barbed wire. So that was the second one, and this is the last one. A short one, very short one. Mellowed down now. Mellowed down now, he only watches the burning fires, changing gears, rampaging needlessly, rampaging needlessly. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Oh, man. Yay. <laughs> That's brilliant. Thank you. Do look at the chat because several people have been putting comments there. They are so unusual and you perform them so differently. It's really fascinating. Brilliant. Big hand, please, for Unmesh. Well, there's only one person who could follow that, and that's Kathy. <laughs> and we've got Kathy for an invited extended um, open mic slot this evening so without any more ado big hand for Kathy Carson please. Thank you thank you Josephine and Peter I'm just gonna do one I'm gonna go right back to the very beginning to the first piece that I did in Ubi Hive at my first ever UK open mic about a year and a half ago so this is called Wake Up Call. Did I say how much I love my baby? God, I just love the weight of them. I love the smell of them. The way the light catches the down on his skin. I adore the way he curls his toes when he giggles. My favorite time of day is bath time. When the soft give in the flesh feels like bread toe beneath my fingers and his long lashes sit plump with water against his cheeks. But sometimes, like, like now, in this moment, when that persistent screaming assaults my senses and jangles my nerves, I don't think I love him at all. Sometimes I imagine grabbing him by the shoulders and shaking him hard. I press his tiny body red with rage into the cot with more force than is needed and I back out of the room. Ease and close the bedroom door. I slide down the cool tiles till I'm sat on the floor and Christ, I can still hear him. I draw my knees up. I lace my fingers through my hair and I tug with all my strength and the pain is bliss. It's just good to feel something other than resentment. 
something other than failure. I let the tears fall fast, my own gulping sobs drowning out his scream and my body is aching from lack of sleep. There's this constant nausea that gnaws at my gut. I'm not meant to be a mother. You see, I know that now. Christ, I know it in every inch of my skin. There is silence. Has he actually stopped? Relief floods me as the promise of sleep beckons and I pass the cot, I check him, but something is wrong. Something is really wrong. His legs are rigid, fists clenched and he isn't making a sound. Eyes wide, cheeks flushed and he is trembling. I reach out to touch him and he doesn't even see me. I start to pray. I don't remember the last time I prayed, but right now I'd make a deal with the devil if he was standing in front of me. And I think God answers because even though my blood is puddling in my feet, my skin feels like it's shrinking. I managed to pick my phone up and call for help. Somehow from a call center somewhere, a lady called Janice takes control of my hands. I find myself removing his clothing and his nappy and placing him on his side. And she asks me how long he's been like this, but I'm sick with shame because I don't know the answer. But she tells me, time it from now. Help is on its way. At 56 seconds, it stops. <laughs> Tiny fists unfurl into stars and legs that were rigid begin to wriggle and kick and he screams. And it's the most precious sound. And I let the notes of it wash over me, wash me clean, wash away all that has gone before. And I pick him up and I rest his damp cheek against my neck. And God, I just love the weight of him. I love the smell of him. I breathe him in because he is mine and I am meant to be his mother. Thank you. Oh gosh, Kathy. Oh, always gets me that one. Oh. Wow. Thank you so much. Please unmute and give an enormous hand for Kathy's last time. Thank you. Whoa, thank you. I've got to, I always have to recover from your poems. Ah, anyway, where were we? Um, so we have a, a Claire Cider. Claire Cider. Hi, Claire. You're muted. Would you like to yes. read your poem, please? I'll, I'll read it now. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll read a poem. Um, this is uh, from like a travel collection I did. So it was a, a feature of both, uh, photography and uh, poetry as well. Um, the photography was all done by my brother and all the proceeds from the book have gone uh, to Macmillan. Um, oh, right. So it was a support uh, of that. Um, but this poem, i just read one, um, with the boys from the dorm. And this poem is um, dedicated to a friend of mine and uh, I'll just go straight into it. With the boys from the dorm, we sit amongst the wild, huge sand dunes, a rolling wilderness of harsh golden marram grass, fleshy sea spurge, and gray green spiky sea holly at our feet. We roll back our skirts and share wine and sandwiches, talk of my poetry, and your new novel, and laugh over fancying the same man. 50 years of age between us, yet I recognize some of Marjorie in myself, that lust for life, her feisty independent spirit, debating politics with the boys from the dorm, young miners camping in the grounds of Colicarlic back in the 30s, giving the cook a row for her sexist comments. A woman student doesn't belong here. 
swimming in the sea every day of her 90 years, enjoying her favourite tipple of gin and sweet martini, and only ever best butter. Remembering her loving husband and their trips to the London theatre, and her cats, of course, six of them, roaming the house and garden. Now I look back across Tramadoc Bay, where waves once lapped the cliffs beneath Harlick Castle. Senatal perched high on the rock face, guarding the secrets of the past, a constant, solid, familiar friend. And it's here I remember you. Thank you. That was lovely, Claire. Thank you so much. By all means, put the details of your book in the chat uh, so that if anybody wants to look, okay? And here, yeah. Unmute and give a big hand, please, to Claire. <laughs> lovely. Well, one more open mic before we start with Simon, and that is Chris Fewings. Are you there, Chris? I, I am here. I don't know why my video is not working. Can you hear me? We can yeah. hear you loud and clear, so okay. at least that's the important bit. <laughs> um, uh, this is, um, I'm in Birmingham, by the way. Thanks for having me. It's my first time here. This, yeah, welcome. This is um, a, a poem called Bidding, which was published in um, uh, Under the Radar magazine some time ago. And it's also in, in the book I brought out last year called Pity the Uncrooked Tree. Brilliant. Bidding. I arrived at the station. Train delayed an hour. Stuff that. I bought my own, drove it myself, got there early. A kerfuffle on arrival, the fat controller spluttering about rights. I bought the trap. I had a heart attack. The ambulance was late. I built myself a hospital for the next one, staffed it with robots. Programmed them myself, built a bypass around it for emotions, auctioned my own. I sold excitement, pain and fear. I made a plaster cast of love and sold that too. I felt the first twinge of that feeling of falling for a face, losing control. I boxed it and burnt it. No decent friendships on the market. I cloned myself, GM'd each clone, a range of my perfections. They bored me with their eyes drilling through my vellum layers, ready to sew my signatures into a hide-bound volume of authorised biography. Remaindered. I bid for the publishers. No dice. I serialized myself, a comic strip, sold it for a kiss. That was brilliant. Thank you, Chris. I'm so glad you came. That was fabulous. Can you unmute and give him a big hand, please, brilliant. for a brilliant Thank poem? You. Thank you. Very original. Okay, so now we're going to get straight on to our first feature this evening. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Simon Alderwick. Um, now, <laughs> Simon's a bit peri peripatetic, is that the word? <laughs> because we never know where he's going to be next. But at the moment, um, he originally came from Southwest London, a former Cheltenham resident, and is now living in Wales. His poetry has appeared or is forthcoming in Ink, Sweat and Tears, Anthropocene, Dust, Black Flowers, Eye Flash, Feral, and our own Trawler 2020 anthology, among others. He writes regular horry, horror movie reviews for The Daily Drunk and moves about a lot, as we've said. He's currently working on his first pamphlet, provisionally entitled Hooligan Wind, I love it, 
which will rattle around his scatterbrained mind and throw up a mix of profanity, profundity, found poetry, and fun, punditry. Gosh, that's a tongue twister. Thank you for that, Simon. So please give a big warm welcome for Simon Aldwick. Thank you, Josephine. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, it's really good to be here. I did my first ever poetry open mic at Squawkers in the Cyber Parrot quite a few years ago. So it's always good to uh, come back to uh, Crafty Crows and uh, still get a bit nervous, but it's it's all good fun. Um, and you're lovely people. I really enjoyed the first the first section. So um, I'm going to read some of the poems that I'm working on for this pamphlet that might never see the light of day because you know how it is, you submit these things to places and then months later you, you're back, but, um, or not. But yeah, this is the first one. It's uh, in the uh, ancient form of Pantum, which I think is kind of like, if poetry was Kung Fu, uh, Pantum would be like at the Shaolin school of Kung Fu, I think. But yeah, this, Poem is called Strategies for Coping with Anxiety. Stow a grab bag somewhere safe, be ready. Your passport, a gun, $5,000. Keep telling yourself you can start anew. Life begins at count to 10 in your head. A bullet, a gun, $4,000. We must follow the system, please sign in. Life begins by introducing yourself, but if you can't see them, they can't see you. Not according to the system, please wait, a finger presses a panic button. If they can't see you, then you don't exist. You must remember to breathe, count backwards. A finger squeezes, a trigger deletes, a name, a number, a human being. You must remember not to hold your breath. Stow a grab bag within reach, exhale. And then uh, I'm going to read the second one from the uh, proposed pamphlet. This one is uh, was in the Poetry Space Anthology. Um, although I rewrote it since then, it's now in a kind of sonnet form. Um, I'm not, don't do much in the way of forms, but um, I was messing around with forms recently. So this is called We All Fall Down. My coffee cup anxiety rattles like loose change. I do think about falling in with oncoming traffic. Grief lingers, we've got so much in common. Most victims know their killer. On the radio chat, the death of all our freedoms. My elbow always leans on the table, ambivalent to the pain this Each day I forget I can't stop drinking. It's pleasant to recall, but not for long. He opens his mouth, I flinch, take deep breaths. Beast with a chair leg, see his true colours. What to do now? Angry clouds the right speed. If speed means distance and distance means pain. Sometimes I can't. People are people. Um, yeah, so this actually came from like a writing exercise on a, on a workshop that Cecilia Knapp was uh, running and it was they actually said every line should be like about this, about that, and then you just kind of bung them together. And it, yeah, it's kind of good to work with forms. This next one was on a different workshop where they said, write about the afterlife, but you know, instead of saying the afterlife's like in a cloud or whatever, just put it somewhere that nobody's ever sort of imagined it before. So this is what I came up with. Um, this is called Last Train. The train was a packed with spirits from across the line, all of them smiling. None of us wanted to step onto that train that weren't going to stop. We were forwards and squeezed inside and walked on by the endless crowds, always leaving, always arriving and never going nowhere. I was pressed up against an old round face, her hair a burning bush, my hand clasped hers. I'm sorry, I said, trying to shake her grip. It's okay, she said, but talking through me. Her smile stained, I lost my step, pushed my elbows, shoulders, stumbled forwards through the carriage. 
over limbs into the void again. It's kind of funny reading to uh, on Zoom. It's been uninterrupted. It's quite good. Only get three minutes and you've got to like blast through it. But I'm trying to read really slowly so I don't run out of poems before I run out of time, <laughs> which is the opposite of a normal a normal performance. Um, so yeah, sorry to just uh, take my time, but I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. Um, this is uh, <laughs> this is uh, another poem that I'm going to read for you guys. So yeah, this is called Day is Dead. It's uh, kind of lyrical, I guess. I don't know. Day is dead. Last orders, visiting time over, a vigil on the night bus home. Crushed beer cans reborn as ashtrays, CD case paired with credit card. Roll a dice and pray to know the feel of losing everything. Crowded parties, lonely people trying to offload your soul. Shed roll up in her back garden, a hand moves up inside a bra, hanging out asphyxiated, banging against the bathroom door. Primal desire for kebab wraps, drown your face inside that meat. The end refrain cries out for violence, creeping curfews pointy. Okay, this is one is uh, very new um, and it's kind of a love poem. Um, so, yeah, so let's see what, yeah, so that's how this goes. It's called Fools Rushing, kind of like the uh, Elvis Presley song. But, um, yeah, Fools Rushing. It's snowing in the desert. There's no love on the moon. The earth moved when I saw you. I can take the future. We've earned some sunshine, sunshine are in bloom, the waterfall, the brook, the riptide, I won't fight the future. There's a meteorite twice the size of the city where we sleep together. It's heading for where I will tell you again I love you. The smallest part is getting old, is running out of not afraid. For all the days we've just a drought, before the rain, the future. Okay, I'm going to do, you might have heard before, I'm trying to do new stuff, but um, like I said, I've got so much time. So this is called No Haven. It was in uh, Green Ink in about January. I think it was the first thing I got published this year. Um, and it's uh, written about a storm that kind of is just down the road from here, but before, before we lived here. Um, the storm was a once in a hundred years kind of affair. It tore rocks off the cliff face, peeled skin from beach, exposing a jungle of dead wood, shipwrecks, buried treasure, fossilized remains and ghosts. It occurred about the same time we lost our heads down at the shore one night. With no light pollution, the stars looked closer. With no city, the wind was free to do its thing, which is a dangerous kind of unleashed. We had tethered ourselves not far from shore where we got a good look as parts of cliff crashed against waves. I'd be lying if I said when I held you, I felt more than rattling bones. Wow. Um, <clears throat> This is a bit of a silly, silly kind of funny one because, um, but it's kind of serious as well because uh, you know, I'm quite interested in environment and stuff. I mean, you know, I don't know if you've seen, you know, the other day the ocean is on fire. You know, I mean, that's pretty crazy thing. The ocean is on fire and we're all just kind of, you know, continuing to exist as humans in our, you know, really dysfunctional society that, you know, doesn't help a lot of people and damages the well, it's killing the planet really. Um, but what can you do about it? Nothing. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's my message for tonight. There's nothing you can do about anything. So yeah, enjoy much. <laughs> this is called Flabbergast. I can't come out today, bit of a mad one. 
I was opening up a packet of crisps and found the blue whale inside. I said, normally the packaging is inside you, but he failed to see the funny side. I called up a number on the crisp packet, spoke to a vendor girl in the Philippines, said it should go out with the general waste. I said, for the love of God, it's still alive. <laughs> wow. So thank you very much. Yeah, this is, I'm going to tell you about the day that I turned into a bird. It was quite an interesting day. Yeah. So I better write that. It's called My Life as a Bird. Out of nowhere, my arms opened up in golden feathers and I soared away above the horrid roofs of this town where I was born. Done a few circles, loop the loops, dive down to the ground, squawked at people, people shoot me, flailing their arms, I just laugh. Taking chunks of flesh, I'm saying, how do you like me now? I spread my wings towards the sun, circled the horizon, the northern lights evaporating, seeds turn into hay, I shadow, reckoning a field mouse, a storm above, a silhouette, passed across the land below, drawn down against the wind. Uh, yeah, this next one is uh, it's an ekphrastic poem about the cover, this cover of uh, this poetry collection called The Ninjas by Jane Yeah. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, so, and, but yeah, the poem's are really cool. And she, she teaches at Kingston University. I grew up in Kingston. So, uh, but yeah, the cover is like really, really cool cover. So I wrote a poem about the cover called, the, called Ninjas. You might think it's about severance of brain and body, how those fixing us are envisioning the tools of our destruction, how we are overflowing with goodness, a dragon's cave of energy on the surgeon's floor. If we look into our eyes, we might assume we're dead, but something lives on being the treats we reward to those who can break us. We might assume there is nothing beyond the body of the image we inhabit, Whereas other worlds exist within the pages of this thing held in my trialing hands. Okay, I'll just uh, do another kind of, this is a kind of weird love one. Not, not weird love, it's weird and it's kind of about love. It's about repetition and stuff. I don't know what it's about, but yeah, it's called Same Old, Same Old. I'm surprised when you tell You've heard this one before. You leave, I lose my concentration. Back in the house, I turn on the radio. It's playing again. I wait for her. I search the shelf but can't read right now. Picking up a comic, the one about a man who tells his love he loves her. She tells him she's heard that one before. You don't mean it. I mean it. No conditions. I lose my train of thought. Outside, hear the tires scrape the gravel. It's her, it always was. I ask you what's for dinner. You act surprised when I greet you at the door. You stay, I win. May it be like this forever. Uh, yeah, like, uh, recently I've been trying to spend more time writing on my poems, but this one is like one of those ones where you just, it's almost like a free write. Um, and I don't know what the hell it's about, but it's its gonna be in uh, the Anthropocene in about a week or two. And I know you're not supposed to um, read your poems at open mics before they're published, but I think that's really rubbish. And um, I'm really against it, you know, I think that you know, open mic performing live, you know, it, it's a great way of seeing how your poems go rather than sending them out and waiting for three months to be told if it's good or not. You can perform it live. So this is my form of civil disobedience <laughs> is reading poems which are out with editors. So yeah, fuck the editors, bow to the people. <laughs> this, poem, this poem is called Yo Fuck Boy. Take your smartness and explain to me magnets, snowdrift, guilt, 
solve the following equation, reverse engineering is equal to inner piece to the power of X, where X meets the Y axis and the Y axis represents time. Let your smartness off the leash, throw a ball of secure achievements as it bounces against the wall of hearts and hopes and fears. Recreate this as a sonnet, a sestina, a dirty protest, a Christmas number one, it's all academic to me. A sharpened pencil up my nose, touching my brain as my head hits the desktop. But that was just an urban myth. I'm calling smartness, I'm calling smartness, keep my guts out, but he's gone. I'll, I'll just do one more because I, I'm conscious of time. So thank you very much for um, having me. It's been a blast and uh, I'm looking forward to the blast. rest of So yeah, this is uh, another one, another love poem about uh, the extinction of humanity and the destruction of our planet. So I'm cheerful to end them for you people. This is called The Continuation of the Species. Thank you very much. A hot day on her lips, a day of record-breaking thighs. There's no ice left when she tells me we need a circular economy. She breaks all the bones in all my fingers, feeds me soya milk through a paper straw, straddles me, hushes my concerns about this aging population. She knows love is impossible, keeps sandbags across the door, I say we can't go the way of the dinosaurs as we are God's chosen creatures. But her laugh is a tipping point. She scratches my back until I bleed oil. I extract more than life from her. We smoke like chimneys after. The room is filled with wasted breath. We hold away our fears. When she's gone, my cat brings me birds fallen from the sky. <gasps> Thank oh. you very much. Wow. That was such an experience. Wow. I think it's brilliant. Amazing. I've always loved your poetry from the very beginning, the very first time at Squawkers. But you have come on so much. And to be doing this in form as well is like mind blowing. So please, please unmute and give Simon Oldwick a fabulous round of applause, please. <laughs> I don't know where you'll be next time we see you, but wherever you are, as long as you get here on Zoom, we'll be happy. <laughs> Excellent. Wonderful, Simon. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, normally we'd have a short break now, but as I said, because of the uh, competition with the football, I think it's probably best for us to keep going. Um, just before we do, I'm just going to make one little announcement about our poetry competition. Um, the Summer Open GPS Summer Open Poetry Competition is open. Um, there's no there's no topic. It's open. Um, so please send your poems in. Uh, we'd love to receive them. I'm going to be doing shortlisting, but we have a fabulous judge in um, Adam Horovitz. So, you know, it would be wonderful to see your poems in our competition. We'd love it. It also, all, all the um, proceeds go to help us keep the Gloucestershire Poetry Society running. So the more the merrier. Can I just say something? If you, if you, yeah. I'll put the link to the GPS website on the chat. If you go into there, into submissions, you'll find the comp submissions and competitions. You'll find all the details. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, and how you uh, how you can enter. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Peter. I should have said that it is this year in conjunction with um, Black Eyes, uh, which is of course Peter, um, and so it's a, it's, a, it's a combined thing. But all the profits go to the Gloucestershire Poetry Society. Okay. Well, next we have the marvelous Charlotte Emily Anne Lunn. Charlotte is a poet, bookseller, workshop facilitator, and lives with chronic illness. After completing her creative writing degree at the University of Derby, she became the events coordinator at Scarf in Books and has regularly reviewed literature for the BBC Radio Derby. She's a guest 
poetry facilitator with Derbyshire Writing School and also offers editing and mentoring services. Charlotte has been commissioned to write for Shottle Hall and Derwent Valley Mills, and her debut poetry collection, Metamorphosis, came out this May with Verve Poetry Press. These poems explore abuse, mental health and recovery. And I'd just like to read something that's on the back of her book, written by Lian Moden. Charlotte Lund's poetry is powerful, thought-provoking and incredibly honest. A rising star on the spoken word scene in the East Midlands, Charlotte's work touches on themes of love, loss, the body and the mind. And she writes with warmth and sensitivity that few can replicate in this dazzling first collection. So we will be putting the details to her book on the chat later, but for now, please unmute and give a really big warm welcome to Charlotte, Emily and Lyle. Oh, thank you so much for that beautiful intro, Josephine. It's, it's such an honor to be here. So thank you for inviting me. And honestly, the open micers have been absolutely phenomenal so far. And I'm just so privileged to be featuring along Simon. You're absolutely amazing. Um, so just, yeah, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Poetry just feeds my soul. So um, there isn't anything really graphic in my um, collection, but as Josephine said, obviously it's about abuse and mental health so if that's triggering for you um please do mute me <laughs> until i'm finished and um, so i'll start with upbringing you give the minimum a contusion of parental fuses lost to loving you in ways you will never understand hands weren't made to touch bodies this as bodies for memories like sofas that forget to forget you rummaging in this place for feelings. So my next one is called Home Time. And I actually wrote this when I went to Australia back in 2019. And you know, when you grow up with friends, but then you realize as you get older that you're actually very different people. That sort of became a bit of an epiphany for me when I was on holiday with them. And this was uh, a response to that, Home Time. Smothered by chattering mouths, the body count is getting loud until her head is mine on shoulders a spinning top. But when do we stop? Wandering hands in phosphorescent, just down the hall I feel their presence. A crack in the wall, the space has been mocked. Form the old line amongst the voices till it's home time. This next one was actually inspired, thank you. This next one was actually inspired by um, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Uh, she wrote a book called We Should All Be Feminists. And the title was taken from that book. It's called We Teach Girls Shame. Barely enough breath to fill a bra, but you're 10. It's time to be a woman. Buttons undone too, too many to see a ripple whilst girls line up to shed their lining times what it's all about because ovulation is the new black did no one tell you that or were you too busy tying your laces next one is called consent Gladly into sex because your dick forgot its lines i can tell in 30 seconds that you're not going to be kind because you've never made love to a woman have you you screw with the idea that sexual frustration entitles you into my knickers, pin them to your wall, or better yet, your floor. Shrink wrap them like your drawers, hiding you in your drawers, but whores are not only female. And your tail's seen enough be to be sectioned. So keep your erection under wraps, and I don't mean latex, but your tighty whities chap. Um... Thank you. Um, so when I was back at university, because uh, I studied creative writing at Derby Uni, um, a little project was to keep a dream journal, because I've always been really interested in dreams. And I wanted to see what kind of writing would come out of that. And some of the poems that are in this collection are actually written from 
some of the nightmare dreams that I was having. Uh, so this next one's the fragility in maps. We stand in an open field, our entire block, bound by a white sheet, twisting a small breadth between a smothering. Words inescapable, no fault can pass through. We fall to the ground, the sheet tears and slips from our faces. Next one is afternoon tea. Too refined for conversations like I'm not eating lately. For anorexia to be synonymous with anxiety, you don't notice the things we don't talk about, yet you're screaming in the street, are you making yourself sick? I mean, honestly, who wants to make themselves sick? confirm your diet. Symptoms of anxiety, loss of appetite, overeating, bloating, IBS, stomach ulcers. Raising children not to feel is the reason we're here in your car. I tell you that I'm depressed and you say, well, I already knew that. Call of desperation. A thrumming heart beneath a silk feathered cage, a microcosm, unhinged bell. It faintly hums, speaking in tongues, crooning cacophonous in distant fields. Swooping over hedges, silk sweeping, tucking, it dips, fragile, feathered scarf falls. See lots of nature poetry come up in my collection um, because I always find it really healing and I think it has been a really big part of my healing process. Um, and this was, it was a concise winter. Sharp, accurate, right. Like the cook card doctor that swept you away, covered in everything you tried so hard to hold on to. The numbing of the new pill they just gave you, of you can't move until you've finished feeling, till you've topped your pot. These leaves leave you with nothing but bitterness, distrust and loathing. The curves hiding within your arms as I was sleeping. I could be angry because being angry is easier. And I wish you could be angry because every time you to me, I get closer to replying. Because I was too much and not enough and she told me I didn't need her anymore. After way too many, how do you feel on a scale of one to ten? Only allowed to have one problem at a time until you laugh, until you cry all at once. You're all so lovely. Thank you. Um, so this is another poem um, that was actually based on a very terrifying dream that I had. It's called Dusk. The sky lost its luster. Grey fell away like an old skin spinning. Ash curls in the lake. Lucid white settles in the trees, sifting between boughs, the white engulfs you until you're forced to the edge. The ground peels and crackles up the tree vein, wing them like winter blood. They tear themselves apart, become white. You walk into the lake. There is just you and this mass of water. White filters through the blue, floating languorously toward you. You stand in the center, ankle nest, pull back your toe as the white reaches you. It latches on, begins to work its way up your body until you take your last breath. So if any of you are like me, do you ever get do you ever have like all your thoughts when you're sat in the bath or when you're having a shower and if you're a really anxious person like me it's always the really intrusive thoughts <laughs> that come at those times um so this one called paranoia unplugged sweating forehead shoulder blade neck won't sit on the edge of the bathtub is the plug in or will the happenings go slipping out 
What clarity was there to be found? Dear bathtub, found by bubbles. Is the plug in or out? <laughs> I'm so glad that you're all still here and haven't run off for the football yet. Well, maybe some of you have. <laughs> I must be doing it. Um, so this next one is, it's about my experience with GPs, which generally has been quite a negative one. And it's, it's interesting because the more people I talk to about um, doctors and sort of medical professional people I find out have had really negative experiences. Um, so it's something that I really wanted to have. What I should have said to the doctor is, Try having a panic attack for two weeks instead of sticking a stethoscope down my shirt without my permission, then tell me I don't feel. Thank God for the pills. I don't know how else we'd all keep up with this world. I get where you're coming from. I wouldn't want to go back to thinking I may die from tripping over my own feet, numb behind the eye. Sometimes we just need a helping hand along the way. We weren't meant to do this alone. We need people who don't say, I already knew that. You just got passionate about something, so you can't be depressed. People have it so much worse than you. You're too young to be stressed. We be happy and sad and lonely and in love and tired and excited, just like everyone else. Uh, I'm moving into, thank you. Moving into the third part of my um, collection. So I've gone through sections. So this is. A stillness settles, long exhalation, so you can keep breath now. <laughs> and this one is called Metamorphosis, which is the same title as my book. Um, and there was a few reasons that I chose Metamorphosis, actually. Um, one, because I love Salvador Dali, the painter, and I love his um, work, Metamorphosis, but also because it's all about transformation. And in this book, there very much is a sort of transformational journey from being abused to mental health to recovery. Um, so I felt like it was a nice pause point in the collection. Metamorphosis. Years stump, new birth. The ground prints bud in spring, lidless burrits brimming. Spinted steam buds purge, peel back green, coated in pale brown dyes. Candle lit silhouettes, fingers grip mucid bark, these fledged leaves, pale brown paws gasp. Forked lightning, up pulled roots, six sycamores hand in hand, ring roses, we all fall down. Chestnut leaves fall to disease, little branches, nutrient sucking soil, the edge of the forest, stream heels of hail. Death rakes the leaves, the fogged sows, tugged twigs. Boughs bow to the Valdi's crescendo, give a bob groan, green buds hiding beneath snow, a loving cold, pimples, purplish black bark. The frost fleece of bare book forest thermal in soil socks. Timber years appear only to gain again. They behold them. <laughs> this next one is called Sermon There are days when you can hear me smell work. Unhinged, leaning further and further into myself. Doors are open, but I'm not sure I want you to come in. There's something stray, connections in the garden, overbearing, insensitive. Language is dead impersonation where the floors are saving face, blocked by bowels of thunder, feet tread softer. And this next one is called Sociopath on a harsher tone. <laughs> he had to go to bed with himself at night. Think of all the things he had done, why he exploited the spaces till there were none. 
whittling the meniscus mistresses lined up like paper chain ladies because they've not seen the creature that knows how to celebrate tears an obdurate thing you have been will they write in the eulogy will anyone be there Josephine might have noticed in that one that I added in an extra word. That was from when I wrote the first draft out. <laughs> Nobody else knew this, so it's fine. <laughs> Maker, waves are homesick for you to find yourself when you feel like drowning. But you wait in the place we were made, naked and giving you much. Your reasons to reel them in are lost. You're ahead of this town, heavy with goodbyes. Though you feel it still, midnight trains will come with open arms. Thank you. So this next one's called Vorbal. And I like to read this one to myself sometimes as a little um, pick me up and a reminder, I suppose, because I've been told by many people in the past that I'm very sensitive. And some people have said that it's a really bad trait. And some people have said it's a really good trait. But I actually like the fact that I'm a sensitive person and I think it's what makes me a poet. So um, this is a bit about that. Vulnerable. Be frugal with things and not with feelings. This isn't skinny living but fat. It swells, not quite tubular bells, sweltering holy wed to exorcism, but an inner thing that cares, wants to be shared quicker than fingers can click. Life experience is making you sick. You don't need it to be sensitive. Yeah. I think I've just got a few left. Oh my gosh, gone so fast. Oh no. I've got one left. So thank you for being such a beautiful audience. It's been so lovely to be here. So this last one is called Carousel. Time moves forward, heedless to hiatus, feeding us to the years we are not yet ready for. These bodies whinny for overfilled plates, pivot in tandem, fingers suffocate. Tapping on and off to the splutter of bridge meets river. Ways we will not endure bring us to places where our eyes are taken from us. A root with the delicate flowers whose name I forgot. Lost signal and a siesta on the stairs. Thank you. Thank you, Charlotte Emily Lund. It's beautiful. Um, can you put a, a, a chat link where we can buy the book? Because seriously, everybody, you should get this book. It's fabulous to read. Please, can oh. we have an in, unmute and have an enormous round of applause for Charlotte Emily Lund? Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Oh, wow. Well, that really was anybody who's gone to look at the football has just doesn't know what they've missed. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you were amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I think now we could actually have a five minute break if everybody would like it. And then we'll come back and the open mic afterwards will be Gerald Kells, Leslie Constable, Doc Janning, Carlos the Unhappy, Jake Wildman. Clive Oseman, Michael Sindler, and anybody else that, that might want to then please put it on the chat and we'll see what we can fit in. So please, a very really one last big hand for both Simon Aldwick and Charlotte Emily and Love. You were wonderful, <laughs> both of you. Fabulous. Yeah, great set, both. Great set. Beautiful. Well done. So we'll just have five minute break and because I need to top my glass up if nobody else does and we'll see you back here in five minutes. And there's something very quiet. Yeah, right. <laughs>
These two smashing headliners, Peter, that was amazing. Yeah. Wow. We, um, I remember Simon when he, 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 uh, he was based in the Philippines, I think, and he was in England and uh, he came into the Scorpers at Cheltenham and did a, you know, a short open mic. Um, and then we didn't see him for about three months and then he came back and did another one. Um, I mean, Squawker's days, God. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just looking here to see who was around when we were at school. Who, uh, Kathy Baker, Catherine Baker has headlined at Squawker's, as has Clive Oseman. Um, and apart from me and Josephine, I don't think anybody else here was involved with the Squawker's thing. So it shows how much Zoom has increased yeah. the different type of audience. Uh, yeah. Uh, while everybody at the moment is very, very keen to get back to doing live performance. And I think that's a bit dodgy at the moment because we don't quite know what's going to happen in the next few months. Um, I think, I mean, our plan is to keep uh, Crafty Crows going anyway, because I think we have a different audience to what we have locally when we put uh, events on. So yeah. positive. Well, well, we all hope that you do, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm in two camps. I really miss live gigs too. I really miss the physicality of people. So yeah, I'm in both camps so I am. So I think I think there's an argument for both. Uh, yeah. for both live events, obviously, and for uh, Zoom events. Um, yeah. because you know, largely they're a different audience. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Oh, what a what a really sort of full on experience that was with you and all the other the three or four other open micers we had and then straight into that actually it is quite exciting to do it that way interestingly yeah. isn't it um, it's a great build just for yeah yeah emotion emotion <laughs> i needed my kleenex again kathy you, you should warn me beforehand you always need your Kleenex, Gerald. Whenever Kathy's on, you just yeah. get it. You don't worry about which pose she's doing. It's a given, isn't it? Even yeah, I yeah. need Kleenex sometimes. I, I, I haven't heard that one before. It's brilliant. That was the yeah. very first one I ever did. I saw my group of friends around me here. I've not heard it before. Okay. Brilliant one. It was really good. Oh, I'm going to get Sean tomorrow. I can't wait. Oh, oh Josephine. Oh, bless you. Really, so, so much hair now. I desperately <laughs> need to cut it. <laughs> I feel like a shaggy dog. A spank <laughs> or something. <laughs> I know the feeling. Pardon? I, I, I know the feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, well. So that will be good. And then I'm off to the opticians to get some more glasses. So I'll be able to oh see Oh my that. goodness. It's all going on tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not on to the, um, you're not on to the, um, uh, not by a folk. Um, very folk, vocals yet, are you, Josephine? No, and my optician keeps telling me that I am mad mm. because I still have distance, reading and computer glasses. Uh, yeah. Josephine, I wear contact lenses and then I put my reading glasses on top of my contact lenses. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> I can't wear contact lenses anymore because I had an eye infection and it gets uh, worse. So. I have uh, five five You have five I, I never lost a pair of glasses in my life until I bought my first pair of um, varifocals and I left them on the bus. <laughs> like, it's like a mortgage every time you buy yeah. yeah, that's wow. the trouble, isn't it? Yeah. And you can't buy cheap ones either. They just uh... well, no, because they don't work. <laughs> well, yeah, the, 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 the more the, the cheaper ones don't um, vary don't enough. The no. Yeah. They're not very focal enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a new word. <laughs> Yeah, that's one for kind thanks, Josephine. Very focal. <laughs> <laughs> That'd make quite a good poem, actually. Very focally. <laughs> Garrett Loss is very focal in the bath. <laughs> oh well, we didn't miss. We didn't lose too many to the football, so that's brilliant. 
I'm very pleased we've still got a few people left. So, Ooh. It's really funny because in Northern Ireland, and one of the girls in work said to me today, are you watching the football tonight? I hope we win. And I'm like, what's this we? We're not English. <laughs> <laughs> what's this we business? And it's the whole Protestant Catholic thing. So if you're a Protestant, then you're we. And if you're a Catholic, then you're them. So it's very, it's really yeah. politically loaded. So as <laughs> you must have been. You must don't think politics and work. <laughs> That's my problem, you see, because my family, uh, my grandparents, great grandparents were both Protestant and Catholic. Yeah, so, I was the same. My mum and dad were mixed as well. So you yeah, get, yeah. It's, it's tricky territory. Yeah. But I, I noticed you that the question. <laughs> today, Kathy, it never gets on the news. The the the, the um the, the, the bonfires were getting on the news because they're building this one that they're gonna make hundreds with these pallets and, and it's just uh, I mean, sorry, it's, what's this? Well whenever they build, the twelfth of July bonfires for they, the oh. they build these huge pallets and they've got this one. But I can't remember where it was. As I understand it, they used to do it with um with tires so to stop them doing that they did this thing where they kind of get them to do it with pallets but the trouble is these huge bonfires are incredibly top heavy oh because it God. burned in and I, I remember getting off Belfast airport one time when we were there just at just and there was one of these huge things right next to two terraced houses and they had to kind yeah. of board them up and then, <laughs> you would you credit it that's <laughs> not they they get so big that they melt the windows of the houses around them. Oh, that's, my God. That's well, how this, big they get. Crazy. This one they were showing on the news today, which they're going for about 120 foot, and the lads it's, were climbing it's 80, up. The, it's 80 foot in the moment. They were climbing up the side of it, and apparently they've done it. And they, and But it, your health and safety, if you did that at work, you'd be... So, so why isn't there some kind of health and safety involved in it? Um, because even... paramilitaries don't do health and safety, <laughs> it's kind of not in their remit. Well, no. <laughs> the, 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 as honest as I can. <laughs> the, the brilliant comedy sketch in which they're doing health and safety, isn't there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, you guys. Okay, well, we're all back, hopefully. So I think we should get started because we've got lots and lots of lovely open micers. And uh, Gerald, you can start us all off. Okay, I'm going to start. We were down in Bristol and I went to the cathedral and I was admiring all the tombs with their wonderful poetry. So I wrote this pious poem. I lived a life of piety and was buried with God awful poetry. Such a fate befalleth those who replace pure chastity for upturned toes. So you who honoreth my name, be naughty, lest you suffer the same. <laughs> Read the poetry in Bristol Cathedral. You, you, it's, it's, there's some stuff. And outside, while I was there, outside they've got a memorial to... Um, to uh, refugees um, and I wrote this little poem about it. It's a beautiful little memorial, but stuck with me. It's called Refugee. Uh, you can look at a picture of it sometime if you want to. Between a rusty heart sits, a mother bent across a child. The flaked paint runs down to earth, collecting where the soil clumps. Beneath the ancientest of walls, beneath a gargoyle water spout, beneath a hundred million prayers, which didn't save a single child. And um, so that, yeah, because I was thinking about that, and I, in my book, 51 Poems, it, it, it the first poem is about a, a grave in Bristol Cathedral to Richard Hacklett. Um, but I won't do that one. I'm going to do one about another cathedral. This is called Scale Force. The path is rusted red 
from Clod Hopper's boots. The bridge is bolted through with rigid iron. The side of the hill is laced with brown tracks cut by children running, yelling, caught short. When clambering the mountain ribs into this cleft of tight packed trees and dank rock, a hidden away place, a cathedral, high vaulted under his holiness the sky. God's water, thin and righteous, falls so clear, a singular shaft of white that hangs in space, a kind of machine of wonder a hidden pool which gathers water at an altar stone, then tumbles strands of pearled opacity on rocks that never should have been climbed. Brilliant. Thank That's me today. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, we next go on to Leslie Constable. Leslie? I'm ah, here. there you are. <laughs> I'm here. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Wonderful evening. Um, all right. Um, I'm sort of indecisive, but um, I've decided I'm going to read. This one's pretty new. Um, it's called On the Greeting of Three Horses in Yorville. Hearing the stillness through the glass whispering to me, I imagine the soft breath. In seeing outside the three horses tethered, I'm drawn in on the inhale. Through the window at its distance from me, the window only seems solid. I hear, I am not holding my breath. I am not holding my breath. I hear the transparency, not the horse. The horse that knowingly exhales the release of his knowledge in that moment in time, his sometimes heavy sorrows in the moment, the one foot sore held up as to not touch heavily the ground, held up slightly on point so as to hover slightly, to not hold the weight, the weight, the pressure of it on the ground. They are three, the horses, one dappled and spirited, the other two more quiet and still, the second, the middle one, with heavily feathered feet, the third, long lashed, the color of caramel, all three lashed to carts which seat children and take them for rides around the town. They wait, the horses, the third, the caramel one, has blinders attached to its bridle. I understand, I too am an animal which needs blinders. I see its quick and careful attention to the all, the signs visible on its face as movement plays across it, the almost imperceptible sounds, signs, excuse me, of a quick attention, the most subtle of movement across its face, the muzzle quivers, the signs in response which play on his face, the ears tune in, moving, the attention so quick that it needs this calming, a cushion, a barrier, a shield, anything to block out, to slow down, slow down the processing of stimuli, the rapid fire movement with, which jars and startles each movement as the glint of sun on glass, a sharp shard that might cut, demanding the close and quick attention, a response that increases in size in volume with each movement, a sound that amplifies as it reverberates off of buildings. He is breathing quietly as horses do, soft and quiet, a warming breath, the hum of existence in him and coming from within to without. To me, the sound rises, levitating so as it hovers in front of me before it subsides level with my eyes, my ears, my mouth, my mouth from which the steady sounds of quiet praise, the still joy in, and the love for this horse, this beauty, the sounds, my sounds emit from me unchecked, the call and response, sure and steady as a hum, sure and steady as the lullaby, sure and steady as a prayer. There is no difference. He is talking to me. I understand. We are the same. I too pay such attention, too much attention as, and as he does, excuse me, and as does he, I need the blinders so that I might see better. Blinders 
that I might learn and know and practice and practice the patience in being, the patience of the patience of being that in his grace of being, the horse has attained. I understand and looking, I understand and listening to his breath come and go, the breath as it first emits when the release visible to the eye, the presence of breath visible to the soul, the release of being there and present for me to see. And I learn and am grateful that I learn this horse before me, my teacher in breath. Ooh. Thank you, Leslie, please unmute and give a big hand for Leslie Constable. Brilliant. I have one more real short one, real quick one. Well, we have. I think we need to get going. I'm. I'm sorry. Okay, that I will just our leave. Slots are sort of supposed to be three minutes, but you okay. know. Okay. I'm not good at time. I, I will tell you, but thank you, everyone. Thanks. Um, next up, Doc Janning. Welcome, Doc. Thank you. I have two poems for you. Shimmering opaline fire rises from Chthonian depths into the garden of being. Sleeping embers of memory flare into sparkling flames of thought and explode into showers of words. It invokes incantations of love, joy, and peace amid visions of nature's exquisite beauty bursting across infinite dimensions of time and echoes in a plangent blaze of lines and trenchant stanzas of poetry. That's poetic fire. The door of self among ungoverned skies and forgotten stars midst vanta black spaces on the edge of beyond I am everything and I am nothing at all, seen in shadows within shadows. I am a pointless portrait, assembled, disassembled, reassembled. I slip through realities and walk through the door of self into the difference between myself and myself, into memories I should not have of an unremembered past and the unknown future of time folding into itself, into a cloud of limitless possibilities where all is coincidence of nothing I would ever know, but I knew. Thank you. Thank you, Doc Janning, that was brilliant. Please unmute, big hand for Doc Janning. Brilliant. Okay, moving on swiftly, we've got uh, Mark, no, sorry, Carlos the Unhappy. Thank you. I think um, everyone's, everyone's reading so well tonight, so you watch me now trip up like someone <laughs> sort of wading through jelly in clown shoes. Um, so I'm really intimidated tonight more than ever before, so thanks for that everyone, you've done a cracking job. Um, and my poem is called Nothing Special. So, so how fitting, yeah? Uh, okay, it goes a little bit like this. This is um, based on the idea, sometimes when you're writing, you catch yourself writing and you kind of become omnipotent and you're thinking, where am I going with this? What is this? What on earth am I doing? Should I be doing something else? And that's what this poem is about. But then I decided to put in one of the greatest heroes of, li of uh, literature, Don Quixote. So uh, he's in here for you and he might just rescue it, but don't believe a word he says. Anyway, so nothing special. There will be nothing, sorry. I need to turn the light on actually, wait there a sec, wait a bit. See, I, turned, I promised I would uh, make a mess of that, <laughs> trying not to swear and everything. Anyway, okay, so I can't, believe, I must have read this about a million times and I can't even see it now. Right, so nothing special. There will be no special sunset. Something ordinary is happening everywhere. For example, 
Don Quixote sits in a riverside orchard, his horse happily at rest, long neck bent to the grass, his crooked lance asleep, the battered armor wrapped in an old blanket makes a welcome pillow for the squire. Hungry Quixote, but stale bread will have to do, bored of apples. Look, watch one fall as, as magpie disturbs a branch and an apple drops from the leaning tree, drops like a boy on summer rope swing into the sparkling river green, white cloud stilled and no breeze, but on the river flows, moves mane of slow waving weeds, under murk the pike and toad, beneath the surface of emerald sunshine, shining, shining as I sit and write this down, in the quiet over at my place, here in the soft forest, with lulling him of courteously competing clocks. The Don looks up, waits for me to write more, and in the pause, our shy eyes meet like the glance of two awkward strangers in a lift. We listen to the birdsong, the sound of river and time, clocks walking us ever so, lives stepping lightly towards dying, ahead of us the merciful black, and still, absolutely something ordinary is happening everywhere. So, surely trick is to catch each moment like a snowflake, create from the endless pain, the wide at a mountain top, the soil embracing the coffin, coffin lid, the rain, the hand holding, home of the widow and her fluttering net curtains, or Simply, the crashing fall of a wave and the slow chase of another. Thank you. Sorry. Wow, that was brilliant. Thank you, Carlos, the unhappy. Please unmute and give Carlos a fabulous round of applause. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jake Wildman, and I think Jake, this is the first time we've had you here. I don't remember before, so it's lovely oh, I love to have it you. When with I us. accidentally mute myself twice, once through <laughs> Zoom and then again through the headset. I love it. It's not embarrassing at all. <laughs> no, of course right. it is. <laughs> um, I'm going to do two pieces, and it's going to feel like one piece. Um, but the first, the very first small chunk of this, uh, I wrote a long time ago, and the full poem that follows I've written quite recently. Uh, so let's dive right in. Uh, I will describe it as a love poem to someone who is no longer in one's life. You are the place my mind decides to wander in that sacred moment between inhale and exhale. I write these words on the opening page of the journal you gave me six whole months ago. They parallel the note you left as to the point of the paper and the lines, the leather. I'm wondering whether it's a good idea to write anything at all, if I could ever honor you enough or at all. I start to think. I could get fucking bitter or be vengeful and twist apart the spine. I could scratch the pen across where you said to jot. I could scroll down all the reasons why you might come back to me beside the reasons why you won't. And then I could sketch out a doorway drawn with you coming through the other side. I could write my way out of this hole if only I were a better writer. I would promise you that much, my darling, if only I were a better writer. I could spill my guts out, paint the pages all in glistening red. I could be dramatic. Oh, how like the poet to be mournful and to be broken. I could write it as a journal, 
a document of life as it is now a document of life after you. I could paint the snowfall with words and the sun's glare with metaphor and I could mark the passing seasons through coffee stains and spattered ink. I could rewrite the memories, every hug and all the good stuff, the phone calls, haircuts, and I could write about your hair for hours, the scents, the lengths, my trembling fingers running through caress. I could write you a letter, the goodbye I never got to give, countless things I wish I'd said concealed with a kiss, the kind I'd plant upon your forehead. I could keep that sentimentality safe. Your well wishes for better years and my desperate efforts to stay hopeful. The best of the both of us pressed together between pages as a single flower. That's it. Woo. Brilliant. Thank you. Can you please unmute and give a brilliant round of applause for Jake Wildman? Thank you so much. Lovely to have you with us. Gosh, this, this open mic really, really has been something else. So now we'll go on to Clive and probably bring it down. What do you mean? <laughs> you did say it had been something else, and this is something else. Yeah, right, okay. Um, Sorry, Clive. <laughs> I'll let you off, just this once. Uh, okay, so um, I'm going to do a couple of very short um, very topical pieces uh, about what's going on at the moment, but don't worry, I'm not going to give any scores away or anything that's written earlier. Um, and the first one is a is a five seven five that isn't a haiku, and uh, I got myself into trouble with the haiku police for posting this on Facebook. So up yours, haiku police. Is it coming home? I don't know, but if it is, I hope it's been jabbed. <laughs> So that's that one. Uh, I then got involved in a long discussion with some poetry snob. Anyway, um, the, ne the next one is, um, well, it goes like this. In line with what passes for news these days, I've just asked my octopus if England will win tonight. It said... Fuck off, I'm just a regular octopus. What do you think I am? Psychic. <laughs> and the last one I'm going to do uh, is new, although there are a couple of people. <laughs> yeah, uh, and look at the look on Josephine's face, <laughs> face, just thinking, oh, God, gone again. So, um, yeah, so this one is, um, is new. It was written yesterday on the train when I was in a particularly good mood. Uh, so there are one or two people that have heard it. Uh, it's a bit silly. It's called One of My Finest. I've written a poem that I think is good. Probably the third best I have written, if I'm honest. And the fourth best was awesome. It was published in a journal edited by my mate. But I'm not one to blow my own trumpet. I've tried. God knows I've tried. But I'm just not flexible enough. I shouldn't be reading it tonight really because I've submitted it to Poetry North Swindon yeah Poetry North Swindon but I don't think they'll be listening don't get me wrong it isn't perfect the rhyme scheme is as obvious as a Tory at an empathy farm and it doesn't always flow perfectly which is a shame I suppose probably and there are bits where I lost concentration because the ferry was up my trouser leg I keep telling it not while I'm writing, but it never listens. The strength of the poem is in its depth. It's deeper than the Atlantic Ocean if all the whales took a piss at the same time on a particularly rainy day. So you'll have to listen to it at least twice before you get it. The poem deals with the issues of the day in a, in a very novel way, like why Margaret... Margaret Thatcher is the human equivalent of smallpox and why man at C and A is the only way to shop for clothes. Okay, it seems a bit behind the times, but you know history as a way of repeating itself like a particularly vengeful gherkin on a wet Sunday evening. So really, it's, it's ahead of its time in a Swindon sort of way. What? 
Why a wet Sunday? When else would you eat gherkin, you stupid? Jeez. Some people ask the most ridiculous questions when you try to perform poetry. I don't know. Anyway, the poem is so good, I've decided not to read it tonight. If you want to hear it, then send me £20 <laughs> via bank transfer. <laughs> and I'm sorry to inflict this rubbish on you instead. Just class it as a metaphor for disappointment, crushing, soul-destroying disappointment, and a valuable lesson learned. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clive, for um, <laughs> putting us in a different mood. Brilliant. <laughs> But here it was uh what was it i've just got something just going oh yes um when you talked about blowing your own trumpet and kathy said <laughs> i spat my tea out last night <laughs> at i'm just not flexible enough and i had to mute myself because i suddenly realized i was squeaking <laughs> <laughs> well done a big hand please for clive Oseman, the one and only Rah, rah. <laughs> and last but not least, Michael Sindler, could you bring us all back to normality, perhaps, or sensibility, well, or whatever? <laughs> or take us somewhere else. Or take us somewhere else, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Apologies to the roughly one third of the people in this room who've heard everything I've written, pretty much. Um, this is called Aria, and here's the epigraph. I'm talking to the part of you that never speaks. Lori Anderson. Every object on this planet speaks to us, reflecting back vibrations from each sound they encounter, embedded in the rustling and flickering or songs and voices, great rumblings and whispers, caught but not collected, each moment movement a new exposition even the crumpled bag of chips its surface quivering like a pond skin repeats the stories with a plastic tongue deeper yet all aspects of being every subatomic particle rings and hums together the true harmony through which the universe speaks to itself to us and to all else leaving no doubt as to our oneness. What cannot be heard can be felt in silence. The finger hovering over the plucked string tickled by rhythmic radiation. Every atom is ear and tongue, scribe and subscriber. Every substance dancing to cycling series of rising interconnected incremental tones blasting from the black mouth of the Big Bang. All notes and sounds, every chanted word and thought, an echo of primordial exhalation. Every nerve and tissue, every growing cell, every crystalline formation speaks to all, listens to all, sings an open-ended aria of unity. And I'm just gonna, real quick, I think I still have a minute, do a sonnet. And this is called Miracles Hiding. Miracles hiding on this arid plain, subtle forms left clinging inside cracks on slender strands until the coming rain or faint hint of dew remedies their slack. Exiled lovers praying to be again united must in dreams of bliss fall back, conserving hope and vigor nearly drained, waiting out the blazing sun's fierce attack. From slaking fierce hunger they must abstain, remaining faithful unto their sworn pact, and suffer such excruciating pain like a begnigo Meshach and Shadrach. Once reunited, desires, goals attained, the miracle 
of transmutated flame. Okay, thank you all very much. Thank you, Michael. That was brilliant. Please unmute and give a brilliant round of applause for Michael Sindler. I really love that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Woo. Oh, I think we're there. Is there anybody else? She says, There's a voice like some kind of seance. <laughs> Is there anybody there who'd like to read a poem before we go? Kathy? Uh -huh. Can I push Kathy Rin Baker to do one? It is um, half time if that helps. <laughs> no she doesn't want to okay well then that is it thank you if you have a thank you for staying with us and not going off for the football um if you if you have enjoyed it do please uh we we hate to say this as all things do but um if you can give the price of a cup of coffee or a pint of beer uh to our um GPS, it would help. Uh, Peter, where are you? Oh, here. Can you put the, 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 the donation link up on the chat? Sure. Please? If you go, I put, the link up for, I put the link up for the competition earlier. It's the same website, obviously. But, but with submission, yeah. Okay. Not submission, donation. <laughs> I can find it. <laughs> oh, dear. It's been a fabulous night. Thank you, everybody. Um, yes. Next month, we're having Darren Carey. Is he still with us or has he gone? gone. He's gone on. Go He's on. gone, I think. Go. Darren Carey and um, Charlie Markwick is doing an extended open mic slot. So that should be brilliant. So I hope you'll join us then. And I hope that England and Denmark won't be playing still by the time we get there. <laughs> Will it go to penalties? That's what I always wonder. Oh, man. <laughs> I love penalty shootouts. I love penalty shootouts. <laughs> There's no disgrace in losing at a penalty shootout, is there? No, and at the end of the day, I mean, oh, it's an unfair way to lose and all that. But for me, sport, oh, well, yeah, the result matters. But it's about entertainment. And what's more yeah. entertaining than the penalty shootouts in sport? <laughs> Nothing. 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 <laughs> That's what I think. But in fact, I would say I'd be quite happy oh, if that's all that's they did. <laughs> he hasn't lived. What was that, Kathy? <laughs> Fiona thinks there are more exciting things with stage left than, than penalty shootouts. She's not a great <laughs> football fan. But if everybody did just penalty shootouts, they wouldn't be, football wouldn't be on half as long, would it? <laughs> We'd all say hurrah to that. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> uh, anyway, it's been wonderful. Is there anything else I should have mentioned, Peter? No, we've said Darren Carey on the 4th of August with Charlie Markwick, Helen Ivory on the 1st of September. Sophie Sparrow, yeah. who was here a second ago, is uh, in... Uh, in October. October. <gasps> Amazing. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully we'll have Charlotte, Emily and Lum back with us when Sophie Sparham is today. Absolutely. And if you want to know from Mike, you'll be more than welcome. Oh, <laughs> it's been fabulous. So thank much. you so much, Great Charlotte. Evening. Yeah. Where is the uh, link to donate? I don't see it. Uh, oh. I can't find it. Sorry. Uh, you just put it. You just put Gloucestershire. Oh, I found it. Oh, got it. Yeah. Hold on. It's because we haven't got Jason here, and Jason's usually out. Jason does this. Jason is, yeah. Pack person. And because, uh, there we go. I mean, Thank you, Jake Wilden. Lovely to have you with us. Bye, Jake. Bye. 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 See you again. Right, Ooh. I'm off. I'll see you all soon. It's been a great yeah. night. Bye, Bye Clive. Uh, enjoy Bye. the penalty Bye. shootout, Clive. Bye. If <laughs> And that ferries as well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be looking out for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't yeah. sit on him. <laughs> and your octopus. Yeah, and the octopus. Yeah, he's already told me he's gonna win. But... This menagerie in his flat is quite amazing. <laughs> <laughs> See you all. Thanks, oh, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, wonderful evening. Thank you. Yeah, it's been, it's been brilliant. Amazing. Um, both... Amazing.
yeah it's been beautiful thanks very much charlotte and thanks yeah. simon it's uh, i'm really looking forward to your pamphlet simon you do. do let us know as it's soon as you too. get somebody who's grabbed it and said oh, if they don't they're mad because you are so unique well, yeah it's a mad world isn't it <laughs> Nobody else like it. It's like. their loss. It's their loss. <laughs> well, we've heard it all anyway. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's the main thing. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Okay. It's been great. Great night. See you guys. Take care. Yeah, yeah take, take care. care. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Take care. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. 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 Oh, oh, bye. Thanks ever so much. Thanks both of you. Lovely night. Thank you. Yeah, really, I just want to really leave. Bye. Sure. I thought you cut your hair, Charlotte. Oh, so this this is it at the short length. So it was more, oh, it was more right. down here. No, it was a photograph of you it's doing here this. Now. And I thought you were taking it right off. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, go. I was tempted. Ooh. I was tempted to go up there, but I've I've gone in. And I'm I'm enjoying this lens. Yeah, that's perfect. So, I wouldn't go any further. But <laughs> I like this lens. <laughs> oh, okay, thank you both so much for having me. It's been absolutely amazing. One day, perhaps one day, we'll make it up to Derby and see you all. It'd be lovely, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, I would love that so much. And hopefully, yeah. I can come down and see you guys at some point as that well. That would be that good would be too. Really but nice. I think it'll be next year. I can't imagine. Well, it's it's weird, isn't it? But of course, as soon as all these uh, regulations go, it starts to get risky again. So whereas it's been quite safe, I felt quite good at going out and just getting to the point of thinking, mm. well, we could do something because no, wherever our venue is, it will be, you know, safe. And now mm -hmm. it's going to go. So I don't feel it's safe anymore. So. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous book. Brilliant. Thank Thanks ever so much. Josie. I, I gonna... need to grab a copy of... Josephine as well, Josephine. Oh, a Can't even say it. A quietus. <laughs> a quietus. I yeah. was wondering what the correct pronunciation was, actually. Aquietus. I'll let you into a secret. I always used to say a quietus because I actually I, I like quietus. It's an aquietus. Mm, I like quietus. But but but, mm. but that's not how you're supposed to say it. Quietus. Quietus actually, but that sounds too much so I got it slightly halfway <laughs> for my launch <laughs> but sometimes I'm not it. thinking I do it any old way <laughs> I don't blame you I don't I'll blame you. you sorry Peter send me a send yeah that would be great right. yeah be lovely okay well good luck with all your other events thank you take care have a lovely evening and lots you. of love to you both thank you for having me Bye. 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 <laughs>